Welcome to The Mountain Gardener with your host, Ken Lane. Gardening can be challenging, but with Ken's tips, tricks, and local advice, you'll reap huge rewards. Now welcome your host, Ken Lane. And welcome to this week's edition of The Mountain Gardener. Your host, Ken Lane, here every week talking about the landscapes of northern Arizona. And spring is here. I, we, we should really start the whole show out because there's so much interest, so many photos on Facebook, Instagram. They're just being shot everywhere of the trees you're seeing in bloom right now. We've been in bloom with a pink flowering tree that's been in bloom for probably three, four weeks now. It's now starting to leaf out. So the way these spring trees work they uh, the first buds are always flower buds and so most of them will just have lots of flowers no foliage and then as it pollinates they'll start to push those flowers out and start to have, have leaf buds right after that so just underneath that flower bud is a leaf bud and so now you're starting to see this purple leaf starting to show up on this plant so it's been pin pink now you're seeing this purple foliage those are going to be uh, purple twist plums, purple leaf plums, uh, thundercloud plums, Newport. There's several of them, but basically it's an ornamental plum that has pink flowers with purple foliage. And it keeps that purple foliage right through this, the, the growing season until fall, usually sometime in November. It'll start to just drop its leaves. That's deciduous plants. are They lose their leaves in the winter. Many, most, I would say all of the blooming trees need to rest in winter. They're hibernating, refocusing their energies to form the following spring's uh, flowers that, that will show off. So they announce spring, but they need this rest period, much like peonies. Peonies cannot just bloom like this right through the entire season. They're very high energy uh, type of plants, uh, echinaceas. Gallardias, a lot of these uh, high mountain perennial flowers or wildflowers, they need to go underground and rest for a minute, recharge, then they come back fresh every spring. Your trees are especially the case. Uh, lilacs, my lilacs just started to open. So I've got my white lilac is in full bloom. It's glorious. It's, it's stunning. I mean, it's, it's over the top, but it needs to rest through winter in order to to put that flower bud on and then to erupt that fragrance of spring. That's what all, all, all spring bloomers sort of need this. So back to trees. Purple leaf plum was kind of the first one to bloom. About right about the same time, there's this white tree, glorious bridal white tree. It's just covered in white flowers, no foliage, only white flowers. That is going to be an ornamental pear, flowering pears. They're related to fruiting pear trees, only they bloom so early that they don't actually form a fruit on them. Or if they do, it's very, very tiny. We've bred the fruit, pre, uh, fruit piece out of that tree. And so now we just want the flowers. We want this great shade tree that'll give us shade after it's, it's just at the leading edge of starting to leaf. So another couple of weeks, it'll be fully leafed. And so then it's a great shade tree right through really November. And then about November, about Thanksgiving to the first part of December, it's the last tree to turn red in the fall of the year. So it's kind of got, got a lot of seasons, white flower, great glossy shade tree kind of, kind of leaf, and then red fall color in the fall. Those are going to be flowering pears. We've got several at the garden center, the uh, uh, Capitol, Aristocrat, Bradford, Chanticleer, and I'm sure there's more than that. Jack pear. I mean, they're, they're all cousins of each other. And the only difference is really going to be how wide do they really grow? They all get up to about uh, 30 feet tall, 35, 30, low 30s to 30 feet tall, somewhere in there. And then uh, it's how wide will they be? Bradford's the biggest aristocrats the more of a more of a, a street tree it's it's narrower and so in everything all of them have white flowers all of them have red fall color all of them have glossy leaves to them so but the width will change so that's that's what's been in bloom now what's happened this week 
the red buds are in full bloom. Now a red bud tree, this is a native that grows wild, just in the back country, you'll see this, usually a shorter tree like a shrub, uh, it has a heart-shaped leaf to it, which is very, very pretty. But before it puts the leaves on, it's got this bright, not just pink, fluorescent pink. So it's brighter than the purple leaf plums. In full color right now at most elevations of Arizona. Now with that, there's quite a few varieties of red bud trees. This is probably one of the shorter trees that are out there. It only gets up mid-teens. May, maybe 18 feet. Very, it's a short tree, uh, but they all have the same kind of leaf to it. I probably have close to a dozen varieties of red bud because they do so well that uh, they're drought hardy. They're just robust. You can't kill the thing. Well, I guess you could. If you overwater them, you'll kill them. They don't. They're very drought hardy trees. They take our wind. They take our sun. They just take the crummy soil. Red buds are perfect especially for smaller backyards, but they have this really bright pink flower. Uh, great pollen. Here's another interesting tidbit you probably didn't know. Red bud flowers are edible. They're quite delicious. They got a sweet tinge to them. They're really, take some of the flowers and sprinkle on, on top of a salad or, or a, an omelet, and they're just like magic. They're beautiful. But red bud flowers are edible. Uh, this plant is I think every yard should have at least one because they're just so hardy. They're easy to grow. Uh, they're just a great plant, but they've been in bloom. Right now, you're also seeing one that right side by side, the crab apples have started to open up. Now these, the brightest of the flowers of spring on a tree are crab apples. They have the exotic colors too, like red, purple, bright, bright pink. Uh, I mean, brighter than, than the pears as far as that white flower goes. Uh, rich, deep, 3D colors, that's what a crab apple is gonna have. Again, it's shorter and kind of umbrella shaped, most varieties. Now, the, the, the tall varieties that your grandparents grew, they would get up 20, 25 feet tall, and then they would actually put a crab apple on them, it's like a miniature crab, like a miniature apple. Uh, my, my grandmother would make crab apple jellies. In fact, my mouth just watered thinking about my grandmother's jellies. Oh, they were so good. Well, people don't want crab apples, the apple piece anymore, but they want the flower. They want that orange to red fall color. They want that shape, the, the umbrella shape, but they don't want the fruit on it. So we've bred different, different varieties together or grafted them together where we just have the fruit out of there. If it does have a fruit, it's very, very tiny, like the size of a dime. It's something that the, the robins will come in and eat eat all the crab apples off the tree for you. It's like a food mecca for, for birds coming in. So especially in the winter, that fall, winter time. Great plant, but there's no fruit on the new varieties of crab apples. So we've actually got some that are quite small. So if, um, what was that? Prairie fire crab apple. It's beautifully in pink right now at the garden center. And it only gets up to 10, 12 feet. It's short, it's little, it's ornamental. That's it's one you want to put on a mound in the middle of that drive-through driveway or, or just off the back patio. That's where you, in the middle of a flower bed, that's where you accent that. You need some height and some, some beauty and some, some fragrance. That's a great one to go with. So crab apples are blooming right now. There's one that will show up. In fact, it's, I'm starting to hear it's, it's showing up in the lower elevations. It's got a blue flower. It's a bit early yet here in Prescott. Uh, but the lower elevation, you know, 4,000 foot levels, there's a uh, um, purple robe locus. Robinia is the Latin name, but purple robe locus. It's got a wisteria type blossom that hangs down from the structure of this tree. Uh, they're, they're quite stunning, uh, very pretty. And locus, anytime you hear the word locus, super hardy tree for the mountains of Arizona. Again, they're just drought. They'll take the wind, they take just the harshest of environments. The locust families will, will do really well for you. The cousin to purple robe locust is mountain or black locust, which grows wild up in the, in the high countries. It's a shrub basically, it has got big thorns on it. Purple robe locust, they've bred the thorns out of it. And then golden locust. You know, there's a locust tree that has very bright yellow foliage. No real flowers, but yellow, bright yellow foliage. It's really pretty. They're related to each other. And, and locusts are all of them. 
tough in the wind, crummy soil, bright, hot, blistering hot section of the landscape, they're going to thrive. Got a lot in store for you. Lisa Waters Lane coming in. Garden questions after this. You've been listening to The Mountain Gardener with Ken Lane, owner of Waters Garden Center in Prescott. Join him every week for timely garden advice right for the gardens. Visit Ken where he can be found throughout the week at Waters Garden Center in Prescott. Waters Garden Companion Plants for March are Oklahoma Redbud, Mountain Heaths, Rosemary Creeper, Prescott Pansies, and Fanciful Forsythia. Fanciful Forsythia is a gorgeous spring shrub that explodes with masses of solar yellow flowers, followed by shiny green leaves. Every home should have one for sheer beauty, fall color, and gentle natural care. Shop the brightest spring bloomers in store or online at watersgardencenter.com in Prescott. Oh no, my pine trees look terrible. Never fear, Plant Protector is here. Plant Protector? From Waters Garden Center? My super strength protector destroys pine scale, bark beetle, and aphids. Just water into the soil and your trees are protected from the inside out for the year. Thank you, Plant Protector. You can always find Plant Protector at Waters Garden Center, 1815 Iron Springs Road in Prescott. You've been listening to Ken Lane, the Mountain Gardener. Green thumbs learned while working in the Family Garden Center. Now welcome back to the Mountain Gardener. All right, we are back with Lisa Waters Lane in the studio. She comes each week with your garden questions. What are your neighbors talking about? What's going on in the neighborhood? So there's some value in listening and and hearing what other gardeners are talking about. Mm -hmm. So welcome to the studio, Lisa. Thank you. We haven't seen each other all week. Uh, Seems like it. true. We get we leave early. We come home late, and mm-hmm. I've done Chamber of Commerce, a couple events, speaking mm-hmm. engagement at La, La Fuentes oh, uh, Retirement Resort. Yep, <laughs> okay. um, great folks, older gardeners. Yeah, but still it's gardeners. Basically, it's a cruise ship on the land. That's such a nice facility. Oh my gosh, but had probably fifty people there. Oh wow! And very there, they've got small patios or or uh, decks. Yeah. And so, just how do you do patio gardening? Mm-hmm. So container gardens. So right. they were really, really engaged. Mm-hmm. I was surprised. So, you know, in their older homes, they were all masked. Of course, we've all had our vaccines. They'd all had their vaccines. Right. So maybe they're comfortable gathering again. So I haven't been allowed so, in, inside a home place like that in been over, over a year. year huh? It yeah. is is nice to have things opening up some. Yeah. It's nice. People feel like they can come out yeah. and yeah. aren't as worried. So it's, it's a good thing. The Chamber of Commerce mixer, the Prescott Chambers. So I've been to mm-hmm. Chino, Prescott Valley, uh, uh, Prescott Chambers. Um, Prescott had their first one in, in the last year. Prescott Resort, over 150 people. I think it was 155 wow. were there. Uh, it took me, it was, it was a lot of people to go. And, and safe, but you could tell people were more comfortable. There were a lot of vaccines out with folks, right. especially these are business leaders. So they're always, you know, interacting with people. So you kind of want, you're kind of first in line to, to, to hopefully feel safe. So let me ask you, are people shaking hands or are they still doing like the fist bump or the elbow? Or I started, bump? I had one elbow. <laughs> I'm a fist bumper. Uh-huh. Uh, kind of have always sort of been that way. I'm the guy that sits down on my plane seat and I, I wipe down, down <laughs> everything down. I've been doing that for years. It's true. Uh, so it just makes me feel, so I'm a fist bumper, mm-hmm. but by the time you get done fist bumping everyone, you just start shaking hands because everyone is shaking hands. So okay. I would say it's a blend of hand and, and, and fist. Mm-hmm. I did, uh, every sanitation station that I've passed. I kind of help generously, uh, 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 reapplied. Mm-hmm. So for myself, I don't think that was a norm. I did okay. not. Eat the, I'm not there with community food yet. I'm just not. Well, you, that's another platters. One. Never I been. never do that. I never do community food. We never buffets. do buffets ever. No, yeah. no. I just that's a that's a idiosyncrasy I have. I'm weird. I understand. I'm okay with that. I'm, I'm right there with you. <laughs> if you've had the flu a couple of times, I don't COVID. Forget COVID. I don't want the flu. So anyway, just safety protocols were in place. It was good to see everyone energetically involved. Good. Good. So, so a lot of new things are opening up, new festivals and all that. So it's nice to see that happening. 
uh, questions. Oh, you want to talk questions? Yeah, we, we got to <laughs> do some. Enough about the community. Let's talk about the gardens. <laughs> okay. Well, David lives at Williamson Valley Road. Last fall, he planted a fat Albert spruce. Okay. And he would like to know how often should he be watering that spruce now? Good. So, so April through October, we power up the irrigation. And, and again, folks, if, if you need an irrigation guide, come talk to us. Every horticulturist, anyone that knows plants at all, we, they have a business card. And on the back of their card is how to water. It's such a common question. Mm -hmm. You just have to go, here's my card. You can't spend 15 minutes for you know 30 times a day help, telling people how to water. But come in, come get it. But if you miss something, um, come get it. Mm -hmm. um, here's, how, here's what you do. April through October is the planting season, the growing season. Established plants are watered one time a month. At one time a month, a week, <laughs> one time a week. Oh, oh boy, I know. Die. <laughs> one time a week, a deep soak. So you're wanting quite a bit of water on that plant. You want to water, not just 15 minutes every day. That's totally wrong way to water. Water it two hours for all at once in the morning. And that will deep soak you. You'll have a drought hardy, robust plant. In the, <coughs> excuse me, in the winter, what do you do? You still need to water. So you need to water twice a month at that point. So every other week you deep soak. Uh, that's the secret to healthy plants. So a lot of folks turned their irrigation off last fall mm -hmm. and the death and decay that we are seeing come in the garden center is, I've never seen anything like it because yeah. people didn't water in the winter, purely their fault. They just didn't put enough water and the plant died. Mm -hmm. So we had what one major snow event and that was it. Yeah. Since last year, that's all we've had. So it's drought driven. Mm -hmm. So those folks that watered through the winter a couple times a month, it takes the edge off and those plants are thriving. Right. Absolutely look beautiful. Mm -hmm. So that's how you water. That's it. Um, the next question that comes with that is when should I water? And really what you want, you want your uh, the plants are just like people. You just you, you hydrate before you go hiking out on the trail, not afterwards. Uh, so, so, so hydrate them before the heat of the day. Mm -hmm. Get them fully plump, fully juiced up. So we water plants here at the nursery at 2, 3, 4, 5 o'clock in the morning. Uh, we're watering our own personal landscapes. Start at 3, 4, 5, 6 o'clock in the morning. And so we want to have everything hydrated by 8, 9 o'clock in the morning. That's ideal. Mm -hmm. So then they go into that heat, usually 10, 30, 12, noon, they're, they're, they're going, I'm okay. I'm hydrated. How are you doing, buddy? So <laughs> you look a little, uh, you look a little red in the face there. So uh, how are you doing? And so you want to water yeah. in the morning, not at night. But most of your established trees, we're talking one time per week. Good watering one time per week. Yes. Okay. Um, so wait, um, so is that David or Daniel? Who was that David. again? David. Um, new plant. It was just planted last fall. Those are different. Oh, no. If it's under two years old, <laughs> the roots aren't big enough yet. So, so new plants that are more dependent on you, those should be watered twice a week instead of once a week. So mm -hmm. new things under two years old, under two growing seasons, twice a week. And then once they're rooted, once a week. Okay. I think we cleared that. <clears throat> Clear as mud. Clear as mud. So again, <laughs> come get the plant. It's so easy when you, yeah. when you see it. it. It just makes sense. Okay. Janet would like to know, so she bought some California poppies at the garden center, which yep. we do have a beautiful yeah, selection of California stunning. poppies in. She wants to know, does that original plant come back or does it only come back yeah. by seed? That's a good question. That's a gardener asking that question. That's good. Uh, so, so, so poppies do not come back. That plant will only live one year and it's dead. It's going to die in the winter. But poppies reseed they form seeds so easily that entire hillsides can be covered in california poppy because the seed generation they, they have that's a poppy is one you plant at the top of the garden and just have those poppy seeds spill down the hill so once you plant a poppy you'll always have poppies but her question specifically was is it a perennial perennials come back from that exact root not from seed it's that plant comes back from the roots every spring Poppies don't do that. They'll die out in the winter and then come back fresh by seed. So, but you can count on them. And the, the, mm -hmm. the poppies we grew here, it's a new variety that it's like it's on steroids. 
it's big. It's got a big flower. It's not just your basic poppy. It's like, whoa, I must, that must be from Waters Garden Center. <laughs> Just a shameless commercial. Yeah, anyway. Shameless about it. Okay, one more quick question I think we can put in. So Tim would like to know, he lives out in Prescott Valley. His question is, which would perform better in Prescott Valley, an emerald arborvitae or a Spartan juniper? So that's actually a good question. So so the Midwesterners, they love their arborvitae. That's what they, the East Coast loves arborvitae. Uh, here in the West, we're in natural juniper forests. And so you know that junipers will grow, will naturalize and almost grow wild. Mm -hmm. So out of the two choices, juniper is going to be your better, less problematic, less insects, less water, uh, pr better, better mm -hmm. choice. There's a lot of junipers and, and they don't all perform, don't all have pollen either. So you can get a lot of them that don't have allergy things. Yeah, because that's everybody's so, next question. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so there's blue ones, there's yellow ones, there's green. So out of his, Spartan juniper is the better choice out of arbo arb arbovita. Also, arbovita gets torn up in the winter. Mm -hmm. So the snow comes down and just separates. It's got multiple stems and it just separates it. And, and so it's high maintenance. Mm -hmm. it's, 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 it's just high maintenance kind of plant. I would never introduce it into my yard. We have both here at the garden center. So you can shop them, take a look. But I would say go with the Spartan Juniper in your yard in Prescott Valley. There we go. Ken Elisa Lane and the Mountain Gardeners. We'll be right back. You're listening to Ken Lane, a.k.a. the Mountain Gardener. Ken can be found throughout the week in Prescott at Waters Garden Center. Listen each week as he answers timely garden questions unique to mountain gardens. Waters Garden Companion Plants of March are Prescott Pansies, Mountain Heath, Rosemary Creeper, Fanciful Forsythia, and Oklahoma Redbud. Oklahoma Redbud grows to just 16 feet tall. This local native is super easy to grow. Vibrant red flowers cloak the branches of early spring. Luscious heart-shaped leaves emerge with a soft pink tinge that matures to a vibrant green. Shop the brightest blooming trees in store or online at watersgardencenter.com in Prescott. Waters Garden Companion Plants for March are Oklahoma Redbud, Mountain Heath, Prescott Pansies, Fanciful Forsythia, and Rosemary Creeper. Rosemary Creeper is a local favorite for rock gardens, ground cover, or spilling over retaining walls. But not all local rosemary is created equal. This one lives where others die. Knowing you can also use it in the kitchen is sheer bliss. Shop the freshest organic herbs in store or online at watersgardencenter.com in Prescott. You've been listening to The Mountain Gardener with local expert Ken Lane. Join the conversation every week as he answers timely garden questions. Email Ken a question directly from your phone to his desktop through the web at watersgardencenter.com. That's waters with two T's, gardencenter.com. Now welcome back your host, Ken Lane. So we are starting to have some of our customers, gardeners coming into the garden center. They're new to the area and they're losing their heads because some of their plants aren't waking up the way they want them to. Now, let's just cover this real quick because not all plants don't wake up at the same time. Some plants want the soil temperature, nighttime temperature driven, and sometimes day parts. They want the day length to be longer. So your summer plants, they don't like this weather. It got chilly middle of the week this week. They don't like that. They want to be warm. Like they want to put sunglasses on, a sun hat, be in a nice you know, Hawaiian beach and just sit there on the beach and just take in the warmth. They're that kind of plant. They want to be warm all the time. They want to be warm at night, warm during the day. They want to be hot during the day. Uh, these are things like your crepe myrtles. Figs. Figs have no interest in spring. They're gonna. They're a month away before they'll actually leaf out. I mean, crepe myrtles, they're a month. They're, they're middle to the end of May before they'll even think about leafing. But when they do, they take off. They want it to be hot. These are summer lovers. Uh, some people, you know, they love snow and to be chilly. They love they love the, the warmth of a fireplace and a nice quilt over them. They just like that chilly, chill in the air. They're the folks that will sleep with their windows open at night until like the end of the year. They're crazy. They love the cold. Some plants like that. 
And so those are going to be plants like your lilacs. They love, they love spring. Forsythia loves spring. Uh, lots of your flowers. Gallardias, uh, California poppies, pansies love spring. In fact, if there's a light snow, they're even happier. They love to be chilly at night. And so these are the ones that wake up early. These are the ones that have leafed out. They're in bloom right now. They love spring, everything about spring. They're spring plants. The summer plants like hibiscus, they don't care about spring. They want summer. You let me know when spring's over and I'll think about waking up then. Uh, grapes, Grapes are very slow to wake up. Pomegranates, very slow to wake up. They love the summer. They want that. So give your plants time. Don't dig them up. I just had a customer returned a plant, a summer plant, going, it didn't leaf out. I want another one. It's all, it's, and it's all your fault. I'm going, I'm going, take that back home and put it in the ground. What are you thinking? Have some time, man. Give us patience. You need some patience. How dare you dig out that live plant and bring it in here and want to get another one? It'll, it'll be the same, same thing next year. So give things time. What I'm telling folks right now, fertilize things. Sprinkle a little bit of that all-purpose plant food, the 744 plant food. Water it in and pray for warmer days. Play it some music. Do all that gardener stuff that you do, but they aren't ready to wake up. The other insider tip I can give you as a professional, horticultural professional, there's a trick that we use to see if that plant is dead or alive because you can't tell by the leaves. Sometimes they're still hibernating, waiting for the soil temperature to finally get warm enough where they're going, okay, I think it might be okay to wake up now. And so you can take a pocket knife or sometimes just your, your thumbnail, scrape off the bark on a branch if it's green underneath that bark, very much alive. If it's white or brown underneath the bark, that, at least that tip, that branch is dead. And so you do that trick real quick. A pocket knife will make it real easy. Just peel off a little bit. See what the color of the wood underneath the bark is. And you'll know at least if that branch is alive or dead. If you go to the very bottom of the, or the base of the plant, if it's brown or, or white at the very base of the tree, the whole thing's dead. Yeah, time to, unless it's a perennial. See, that's where we get tricky sometimes. That's where you need to talk to a horticultural professional. Perennials actually die at the top and they rest underneath the ground. And not all the perennials are coming up yet. And so your asters, some, some things just are waiting till it gets the soil temperature needs to be just right. And then it starts to wake up. And it's really going to be your summer. The heat-loving plants are late to wake out, wake up. And then your spring plants, they love this time of year. Those are the ones we celebrate because they're like, it's like an oasis of color. We've been inside so long. You can only bake so many cookies. You can only have so many cups of tea before you just go, I just want to get outside and be, be in the fresh air. I don't want to be inside baking cookies anymore. I want to be outside. And so we focus all of our energy on those spring bloomers. Right now, it's the lilacs are glorious. Oh, my gosh. Every yard should have a lilac. This is lilac country. We don't have the diseases, the leaf curls, the spotting that the Midwest does or the South. Um, the, of course, the deserts, uh, Southern California, tropical climates, wish they could grow a lilac, but it doesn't get cold enough. They need it to be cold, to rest, to be able to set their blossoms and to celebrate spring. But the mountains of Arizona, we're famous for our lilacs up here in, the, in God's country. And now's a good time to put one in the ground. Okay, got more in store for you. Lisa Waters Lane coming back in the studio right after this. The Mountain Gardener, your source for timely garden advice right for higher elevations. Guaranteed to make a difference in your yard this season gardening and you don't know where to start? Waters In-Home Garden Service comes to you and identifies what you have and how to make it better. Design advice, water strategies, vegetable and flower gardens, soil and food needs, and problem solving. Always problem solving. You'll instantly be a better gardener. All for just $200 of expert time with a coupon to fill your garden dreams without ever leaving home. In-Home Garden Consultations from Waters Garden Center. We can be at your home this week. 
Waters Garden Companion Plants of March are Oklahoma Redbud, Mountain Heat, Rosemary Creeper, Fanciful Forsythia, and Prescott Pansy. Prescott Pansy's giant three-inch flowers thrive in extreme March gardens. Large velvety blooms dazzle with radiant colors of blue, violet, yellow, and variations of stripes that look like smiling faces and love being planted in March. Shop the brightest spring flowers in-store or online at watersgardencenter.com in Prescott. You're listening to The Mountain Gardener with local expert Ken Lane. Mountain gardening is very rewarding with a few of Ken's tips, tricks, and garden shortcuts sure to turn your thumbs even greener. Now welcome back to The Mountain Gardener. All right, so we are back with Lisa Waters Lane. She comes in the studio each week, and just this is all about her her entire segment, just because because I like to be behind a microphone with pretty women. You, you just like to be behind a microphone with pretty women. Pretty women or not? <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Probably true. But it, it's you're a joy. It's better to be with you than ah. this is more fun doing it with with you than it is just by myself. Okay. Quite honestly, that's it. Yeah. So and then then the audience doesn't have to uh, see listen to me drone on for an hour, five segments. So they get to you're you're the uh, comedy relief. I'm the a, comedy a movie, relief, not yeah. com- comedic, but you're that relief, <laughs> something different than just what's the story plot. It helps uh, take your mind, helps your mind rest. Oh, okay. You're restful to our minds. Sure. Sure. That's anyway, okay. enough. What do, what do you got for us? Well, by golly, we've had another very full week at the Garden That's Center with many more uh, trucks and plants. Uh, if you haven't been by recently, you need to come by because we are packed full to the gills yeah. with plants. Yeah. Uh, and it is beautiful. The upper greenhouse is just Stunning. spectacular. So many so pretty things. This the upper year. greenhouse is. The annual, annual house, vegetable and sorry. herb house. Mm-hmm. That's uh, it's it's thousands of square feet of greenhouse, filled to overflowing, multi-layered, hundreds if not thousands of hanging baskets everywhere, uh, color, 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 mm-hmm. and it's packed full because this is the this weekend is the start of the full-on plant from here through the second week in June. It's sure it's all the gardeners are out, so there's yeah. there's this peak window of about six, seven, eight weeks mm-hmm. where the garden center's packed. And you need to be ready. You need to plan your crop rotations sure. for that mm-hmm. tidal wave of gardeners that come in because they're going, I don't know what I want. I just want to be inspired. It just they're just having fun walking th- through yeah. taking in all the the beauty, the fragrance, it's the hummingbirds. It's, it's fun to see. If you, if, it is. Even if you just want some zen in your life, yeah. grab a coffee and come up to the, the annual house. And just cruise through. You can cruise through the perennial house too. Look, the yard. Right. And the- we have perennial houses. What's really fun is Louis uh, Gomez, his folks over at Prescott Tire, Tire Pros, uh, they're great people. Mm-hmm. You need mechanic. They do more than just tires. They do all of our fleet work. Um, but he doesn't have a very nice, it's a mechanic shop. It it's smells a, like oil. Ar, ar, it's ar. like a man. Uh, and so all their customers give, have work done. You can just tell they're walking over, (laughs) trying to spend an hour or two, just Mm kind of decompressing while Louie and his guys change, fix their car for them. Yeah, that happens a lot, (laughs) which is perfectly fine. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We encourage it. We do. We trade because our black lab goes over (laughs) to tire pros and it's their bones all the time. So Our black lab should have been, he should have been a mechanics dog. He loves (laughs) going over to see the guys. Over at Tire Pro, oh my gosh. He's bad. I go to pick him up because they'll it's, call and they'll go, Vince, it's been here a while. You should come get him. I'm like, okay. And he looks at me and turns in the disappointment. other way. <laughs> and I have to bring the leash to bring him back because he's like, no, no. I like Polly and the guys. I'm staying here. Yeah. I'm, like, I'm like, this is really embarrassing. I do not abuse this dog. They, they are. I think mechanics are dog people. Yeah. If you had to define them, cat or dog people. They, they this over oh. there, especially dog, dog people. Very nice people. <laughs> okay, Treat what else? Lab very well. Yeah. But I thought I would talk about. So we last season we realized um, there was a group of people that wanted some bigger, more luscious, beautiful herbs yeah. grown. So we went out and did some special talk to people, and so we brought most of our herbs are usually in a four inch. Yeah. 
But we said, hey, we want something bigger, more glorious. So we had some six inch herbs grown and they are spectacular. And these are great herbs to find right now, great herbs to put into the ground. So I thought I would do a show and tell. Oh, that's good. Which so works for the video people. The <laughs> folks watching the vlog and all the video stuff, podcasts, they'll love this. Yeah. The radio folks, they're going, what? What, what are you talking about? You'll have Describe to it with words. It. You're good at that. Yeah, I'll help you. So the first one that we have is the dill. So this is the fern leaf dill. Amazing little plant. It's Definitely smells it. Oh, yeah. It smells delicious. Oh, Great my gosh. For cooking. A lot of people use, I'm not a big dill fan, but I don't like pickles either. So, but I know a lot of people use dill in their pickling. They use dill sautés. in their salads yeah. and their sautés. Um, but this is just a beautiful, beautiful little plant. Nicely grown. Does very well here. What we did with that is we took a six inch pot, which is four or five times the size of a good four inch. Um, more for soil quantity. Mm -hmm. And then we put three plugs in each one. So now you've got a plant that's three times, if not more of a regular, regular size herb. Right. Perfect for chefs. Mm -hmm. I mean, restaurant professional or any, whoever Otherwise. likes, wants fresh herbs right now. Yeah. This is a great way to go. You could like this parsley, you could start harvesting right, right now. Right you can, now. I'm going to eat some right now. You don't have to wait. So this is the <laughs> Italian parsley, another great one for cooking. Um, my thought was the so last year uh, we have a recycle bin and someone dropped off four terracotta pots. So I'm like, okay, cool. I know they've been sitting in the garage. I'm surprised I you them. haven't thrown them out yet. But I'm going to bring these home because they're going to fit perfectly in those terracotta oh, pots. Oh, sure. And yeah. I'm going to have them out front by our new little patio set. Okay. So Italian parsley, a great one for cooking. Par parsley, too. Just let folks know that, that that you can harvest right through winter. Oh, yeah. These are all mountain-hardy, mm -hmm. full-sun herbs, fresh herbs, all organic. So if you've not been sprayed to slow them down, to slow the growth or all those weird things they do right. in agriculture, these are organic right out of the greenhouse. You can now put them in your yard or they would grow in that pot for quite a oh, while just by themselves. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Oregano. Yeah, nice. Everybody needs an oregano because yeah. we all do some Italian <clears throat> cooking and, and wonderful. The thing about oregano, I like growing in a pot better than in the ground. Because in the ground, it's like mint almost. Yeah, it takes over. It's <laughs> it very can take aggressive. Over the world. Yeah. Good ground cover. So great in containers. <clears throat> and you're right. It's a nice little evergreen, actually. You can harvest all season long. So Amazing. a story about that exact oregano. It came off the truck yesterday. Yeah. So I took one to the Chamber of Commerce. Ah. I had it underneath my arm. And I'm walking up to pods of business leaders. These are power. This is the, the heart and soul of the community. People that make commerce go back and the mayor's there. And so I walk right up to a group of folks. I, I rub my oregano. I go, you want to smell my oregano? Oh, <laughs> and every single person said, yeah, I'll do that. Because yeah. it's just, it's like magic. There's some, it something about the fragrance Even of fresh herbs. the foliage on it brings yep. out that fragrance. So this one's the Italian oregano. Yeah. But there's... Um, I know we have the Italian oregano in the six inch, but I think in the four inch we have the spicy oregano, yeah, Greek, uh, Greek, the golden, which is really yeah. pretty. I love that one. But just, ooh, I so think too. Good. Some people were asking about lemongrass that came in all your oh. your really unusual mm -hmm. uh, herbs. They started to come into the garden center, so it's really it peaks middle of May, but you start to see that leading edge yeah. of really. Just super unusual. You know, Thai basil. Yeah. That's unusual. Oh, we have lots of basil in right now yeah. from the big leaf basil. Um, there was a, what was it? Spicy globe yeah. or all these different varieties. So if you're a basil person. Who isn't um, a basil person? That's like, being, know, it's like saying I don't like tomatoes. So, uh, my brother-in-law doesn't like basil. Really? But you should, you should sisters. change brother-in-laws. <laughs> can, can you do that? <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> Lots of mints in if you're looking for a spearmint, peppermint, orange mint, chocolate mint, orange mint. Ooh, and I saw some pineapple sage there. Oh, neat. So it's too. all the interesting yeah. herbs are, are in. And and here in the mountains, they don't get disease. They love bright days, cool nights. They come most are perennials, they'll mm -hmm. come back year after year. Right. This is great. This is a great place to grow yeah. fresh herbs. It is. And just so it, all of them grow easily in containers. Or if you've got raised beds, uh, do nicely in there as well. Time, time is the other one. We have a lot. You Don't have you? a lot of time. <laughs> we grow a lot of time. We have a lot. We have we have hundreds of square feet of time because we have a time yard. Yeah, we do. Yeah. Yeah. 
So yes, we have lots and lots of great herbs in right now and actually starting to get a lot of great veggies in, but I brought this in because it was so pretty. I had to show it off. So this Gerber is the daisy. Gerber daisy. Yeah. Some people call them Gerbera daisies. I don't care. Gerbera. <laughs> so pretty. We have them in pink and yellow and red and orange and I love, I love the Gerber daisy. So that is a mega revolution variety. The flower is a little larger and we get some freaky barrette colors coming out. So Take a look. We've got hundreds of, of them just harvested. Yeah. So <laughs> flowers and herbs here at Waters Gardens. Thank you, Lisa. We'll be right back after this. Look for more tips, tricks, and garden shortcuts through Ken's website. Podcast the show, read his weekly garden column, or follow him on Facebook and Instagram at watersgardencenter.com. That's waters with two T's, gardencenter.com. Waters Garden Companion Plants for March our Oklahoma Redbud, Mountain Heaths, Rosemary Creeper, Prescott Pansies, and Fanciful Forsythia. Fanciful Forsythia is a gorgeous spring shrub that explodes with masses of solar yellow flowers, followed by shiny green leaves. Every home should have one for sheer beauty, fall color, and gentle natural care. Shop the brightest spring bloomers in store or online at watersgardencenter.com in Prescott. Look. If your mom, wife, or mother-to-be enjoys dead cut flowers and the peace that comes when dining with all those kids, then by all means, take her to your favorite buffet rather than some piece of plastic. But if she really loves her garden, a gift card from Waters makes perfect sense. In reality, you're giving her 90 minutes of peace and quiet while she shops for her own flowers. Waters Garden Center, 1815 Iron Springs Road in Prescott, the place where people who love their gardening moms love to shop. Welcome to the Mountain Gardener with Ken Lane. Gardening in the mountains is different. Listen to Ken's tips, tricks, and garden shortcuts guaranteed to make your gardens more beautiful than ever this year. Now for better advice that works locally, welcome your host, Ken Lane. This is the week from now through May is when the vegetable gardens are going in. And tomatoes, Cucumbers, peppers, squash, watermelons. I mean, just all the all the edible plants that you're used to. Strawberries are actually, we've got them actually setting for strawberries. They're beautiful. Kind of nabbed, kind of picked a few off and uh, nibbled on some uh, yesterday. It was, it was like sweet, melt in your mouth. Oh, there's nothing like a fresh strawberry. There's nothing like a, a fresh blackberry, a raspberry. Those few extra days on the vine are so much better. Uh, tomatoes, you really can't get a good tomato unless you grow it yourself. And here's the reason why. Uh, tomatoes have been bred to, they're, they aren't bred for taste. If you get them from the grocery store, they don't care about taste. They're looking at shippability, shelf life. Can I get them from the farm, shipped a thousand miles, and actually not be bruised by the time they get, get onto your, to, you want to buy them? And so these are off flavored. They're more pithy. They don't have that that melt in your mouth flavor like one from your backyard. The beauty of growing it, growing them in your backyard is you can pick the you can pick the flavor. You can pick the varieties that you like. And normally they're not the ones you're going to find at the grocery store. And so that's why they taste so much better. And they're picking them when they're not quite ripe. They're picking them when they're starting to show color, and then they'll actually ripen in the crate as they're being shipped to your, wherever they're being shipped to, uh, box or warehouse, whatever. And so here you can leave it on the vine and have it ripen those last three, four, five days. And that's the magic. The flavor comes out that last few days uh, on the vine. And so that's why they taste so much better. In the mountains of Arizona, be careful, Not don't be careful, grow tomatoes. They're easy to grow. Everyone wants to grow this great big slicer uh, that they grew in, in Georgia or in the south or someplace where it has a real long growing season. Here in the mountains of Arizona, the, the temperatures drop so dramatically every night, even in the middle of summer, that plants will slow down or even stop growing in the evening. Then they wake back up, it warms up, they start to grow again. So this, this cycle of growth is, is different. And let's say Minnesota or even Alaska, it just grows. The days are so long. It just grows right through the night, right through the day. It keeps on growing no matter what. You can grow a huge tomato plant, a tomato 
uh, 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 fruit with that kind of environment. Here, it gets dark and then it gets real cool and it shuts down. And so it's really difficult to grow really large tomatoes. You're better off growing smaller varieties like cherries, sweet 100s, yellow pears. You, you'll produce like crazy these type of varieties. Uh, salad type of, of, of tomatoes. You can't, you, you'll be so, there'll be so many of them, hundreds and hundreds, up to about the middle size fruits. So these are, these would be like early girls, celebrity, champions, San Diego's, Matig there's a whole variety of them that, that just produce really well. Focus on those. Stay away from anything with the word big or beef or, or steak in it. So beef steak, brandy wines, uh, better boy. These are really big, uh, big tomatoes. They, they ripen. We're notorious for its October. I still haven't picked one tomato yet, but the vine is loaded with, with green tomatoes and we're about to see our first frost. That's, that's common with your really big slicers, unless if you're going to try that, like I'm going to grow my, my, my beef steaks, they're my favorite, I'm going to do this. You can't tell me what to do. If you're doing that, don't start by seed. Start with the biggest start that you can find. Like we've got some that they're grown in cachet pots. They're already up three, four feet tall. They're already setting fruit and it's the middle of April. Start with that because now you're two months ahead head start. So now you, you can actually, you can have some harvest before the first frost of October. So start big for your big tomatoes and for smaller tomatoes, you know, cherries to mid-sized tomatoes, you can start smaller. I mean, if you want to cheat it and start big, I've got, I've got big early girls as well. You could start harvesting probably by the end of May. You'll be having having fruit. You'll be having neighbors over for for fresh tomatoes off your vines uh, for for Memorial Day weekend. That's that's called cheating. Uh, that, that but sometimes gardeners sometimes you need a little you know head start. Uh, greenhouses we want to cover greenhouses. Greenhouses that's called cheating. Total garden cheating. Now the rules are off because you can start so early in the season where you've got time to actually produce these great big tomato varieties. But that's the insider scoop. Also, uh, when you're planting a tomato, plant them deep. What I look for in a tomato, I, I, I only plant starts. Of course, I own a garden center, so why wouldn't I? Uh, I, I? I've started tomatoes three months ago and now we're harvesting, bringing them in right now. So why would I start over with a seed when you own a garden center? And so what I look at in the plant, I'm looking for the variety I want and a leggy. I want a tall stem. I want that vine to be real tall. And what I'm looking to do is, uh, if you'll look up and down a tomato vine, uh, you'll see lots of fine hairs. And if you can get that those hairs in the ground, they'll actually turn into roots. Tomatoes are one of the very few plants you can do this with. If you do that with a cuc cucumber, it will die every time. Peppers die every time, but tomatoes, it's unique to tomatoes. Those stem, those hairs on that stem will turn into roots. So I'm looking for a leggy one many times and I'll pick all the lower foliage off. And many times all I'll have is the tuft at the very top. The rest of it's completely buried underground because I know I want a, as large a root mass as I can get on that tomato. And that's a way of, of in, encouraging, forcing more roots on that plant. It really works out well. Another insider tip I can give you, again, I'm, my name's Ken. We're just friends. We're neighbors talking over that back fence, and this has worked for me. I, I think it'll probably work for you as well. Uh, tomatoes, in our soil, we are notorious for having calcium deficiencies. And so what that will end up, when that mineral is missing from, from tomatoes and peppers and squash, pretty much in your gardens, you'll get what's called blossom end rot. You'll get this, this, where the flower was, where it was pollinated, where the fruit was touching the fruit, it'll actually rot. It'll get this black spot on it. It's called blossom end rot. Uh, peppers are notorious for it. Uh, sometimes that looks like on squash, you're forming this little fruit and all of a sudden it turns yellow and drops. Uh, we blame it on, on pollination, some other things, but really it's calcium deficiencies. 
if you see that or if you need if you if you've had problems with that you're going to have problems again so no no amount of manure you put into that soil is going to make up for calcium we need we need a calcium source that's available to that plant and so what i do they make a product called calcium nitrate it's the most available calcium form you can get to plants and so i will actually get a little bag of calcium nitrate and when I'm digging my hole real deep for tomatoes, or anytime I'm planting a, a plant in my, my gardens, actually I, I till it into the top layers where I'm going to be plugging plants, uh, but where I'm really focused on the ones that have problems. Tomatoes, eggplants have problems. I'll sprinkle maybe a tablespoon underneath the roots. So I want the roots to grow down through that calcium layer, pick it up, and that just eliminates that blossom end rot. It makes it so, it's easy to, to correct. They also make a product called Yield Booster. Yield Booster. It's a liquid. You spritz the foliage of your plants. And what that is, is it's a liquid calcium that the plants can absorb through their foliage. I would get a bottle of that. Actually, I'd get a bottle of that no matter what you're planting because it makes all the flavor come out. Calcium is what brings a flavor out of your vegetables and it makes them larger. And so I'll go through about every couple of weeks. I just go spritz my, take my little yield booster, spritz the foliage, and, and it makes it all taste better. It makes gets rid of blossom and rot, liquid calcium. Makes the fruits larger. Uh, that's something I use. Oh, lastly, let's see if I can get this one in. Uh, we're notorious because the nights are so cool that the blossoms, the first blossoms, won't set fruit. It's very frustrating. So you put your vegetables in, get a, also a bottle of blossom set or tomato set it actually works on more than just tomatoes blossom set works on cucumbers on, on everything peppers really works spritz the foliage of your plants the plant will absorb it and it will force it to set more fruits more frequently earlier into the season blossom set is a game changer in mountain gardens be right back you're listening to local garden expert Ken Lane, the owner of Waters Garden Center. He can be found throughout the week at Waters Garden Center, located in Prescott, 1815 Iron Springs Road. Thanks for tuning in to The Mountain Gardener. If life is a bowl of cherries, why not make them the biggest, sweetest cherries ever? Waters Garden Center is super excited to introduce our new organic fruit and vegetable plant food. This fertilizer has the bonus of added calcium that gives fruit trees and veggies an extra boost to produce healthy, abundant crops. Feed your plants now to help them thrive and grow more fruits than ever in just $27 for a 20-pound bag. Save natural, organic, fruit and vegetable plant food only at Waters Garden Center. Waters Garden Companion Plants of March are Oklahoma Redbud, Mountain Heat, Rosemary Creeper, Fanciful Forsythia, and Prescott Pansy. Prescott Pansy's giant three-inch flowers thrive in extreme March gardens. Large velvety blooms dazzle with radiant colors of blue, violet, yellow, and variations of stripes that look like smiling faces and love being planted in March. Shop the brightest spring flowers in-store or online at watersgardencenter.com in Prescott. You've tuned in to The Mountain Gardener with local garden expert Ken Lane. Join him each week as he answers timely garden questions that are sure to make a difference in your gardens. Now welcome your host, Ken Lane. Now, yesterday's garden class was on how to grow better herbs and vegetables. It's time to put those in. Actually, your herbs, they could have gone in a month ago. So had some beautifully harvested, uh, all of our vegetables, all of our herbs, completely organic, and never genetically modified, so no GMO stuff. We might cross-pollinate them. We might even graft them, like tomatoes, but we'll never change the DNA, which that does happen, especially with corn, soybeans. There's, there's a lot of wheats. They really change the genetics on that stuff. It's kind of freaky. Uh, increases production, but it's kind of freaky sometimes. We don't do that. If you're growing it in your backyard, you should have clean, neat, things that your grandparents grew, you want to grow some. I want those kinds of vegetables. That's what we have. The, the herbs, so you could taste them, touch them, smell them right here at the garden center, and they're completely safe, completely organic. I mean, your box stores, they're still adding nicotoids to their plants. It drives me crazy. This is the most dangerous stuff around, 
but they do it so it keeps all the bugs out of their plants so they get a better shelf life. It's all about it's all about them, their shelf life. It's not about you having a better, safer plant in your gardens. Anyway, okay, Ken, take a breath. Okay, we're okay. That's about them. Our plants are safer, better, local, organic. So, but you can go ahead and taste the herbs. Uh, and, and just see the ones you like. Do I like Greek oregano or do I like Italian oregano? Which one's better? Well, go f have, let your taste buds do the plant one of each. That's what I want. I still got to pay, pay. I got a kid going through grad school yet. So I need to sell more plants. Help the family, will you? <laughs> anyway, just kidding. Anyway, next week's garden class. We're holding them at Friday at 3 o'clock. It's all the new flower introductions. So lots of new plants. Lots of new colors you've never seen before. We're going to show the new ones off for 2021. Should be fun. It's a show and tell. Ooh and ah. It's like Christmas for gardeners. That'll be Friday at 3 o'clock. And the last class is going to be April 30th. It's Friday, 3 o'clock. It's Arbor Day and the top 10 flowering trees. We're going to go over what are you, what are you seeing bloom right now and what could you plant that could add beauty to your yard. Uh, we're going over the top 10 trees. And then, of course, how to plant trees. Then we'll go into a bit of a hiatus uh, where the, the facility, we're already seeing that. The garden center, we, we've only got maybe 100 parking spaces if, we're, if we get creative. And we're starting to max those out. So the gardeners are out. And so we'll take a little break through May. And then I think the, sec the third Saturday in June, we start back up with the summer series of garden classes. So they're, they're free. We just want you to be a better gardener. We fully believe if we can help teach you how to be a better gardener, you'll appreciate that. And you'll come back and support the little guys instead of the box stores. And it's worked for decades for us. And so just take a look at that. T check out watersgardencenter.com and classes. I mean, they're all right there. It's pretty easy to find if you're looking. If you want to know if we have a plant, we're starting to get to the point where there's so many customers at the garden center and we just only have so many employees where you got to prioritize people in the store or the phone. We're starting to get to the point where we can't answer the phone all the time. And basically the phone, all it is, is do you have, do you have all day long? Do you have go to our website? That's why retailers have websites. Go to top 10 plants, top the number 10 plants. Our plants are listed right there. The price, the size, what colors, how they grow here in the mountains of Arizona. We're trying to make it easy, mainly for, for you all, but it also takes some pressure off of us to where do you have, we just go, go to the website. Everyone's got a phone. Everyone's got a, a, a laptop or something. Then go check it, top the number 10 plants.com. Check it out for yourself. Throughout the week, Lisa and I camp out here at Waters Garden Center. We love talking to fans of the show. I was raised in a nice house with my family. Now I'm out on my own and have my own apartment. I love my cute little place, but there's something I do miss. I miss my mom's garden in the backyard. It was so special because over the years I was growing up, I watched her give those flowers and plants such a personal loving touch and so much color. I miss it so. Well, guess what? I just visited my local garden center and they gave me some great ideas. And now, because of them, when I look out my patio window, I see the beautiful planter they suggested, teeming with flowers, bright Arizona flowers. Looking at those flowers gives me such a nice feeling. And it's almost like being with mom in the backyard all over again. Want help with planting? It's all online at plant-something.org. Brought to you by the Arizona Nursery Association at plant-something.org. You'll love it, too. If you want a more fruitful garden, increase success in your landscape that just feels better, then tune in every week to The Mountain Gardener. Years of tips, tricks, and garden shortcuts are guaranteed to make your gardens nicer than ever. Listen to this podcast or read Ken's weekly garden column by visiting watersgardencenter.com. That's waters with two T's, gardencenter.com. Thanks for tuning in.